join us live with interviews, devotionals, and lessons from all over the world. Welcome to After Beat TV. Habakkuk said, Lord, please tell me what you're doing. And God said, no, I'm not going to tell you, Habakkuk. Because if I told you what I was doing, you wouldn't believe it. If God today told us what he's doing in the world, we wouldn't believe it. Don't you think God's given up and God's abdicated and God's left the throne? He hasn't. He's still on the throne. And those of us that know him put our trust in him and him alone. I don't put my trust in Washington. I don't put my trust in the United Nations. I don't put my trust in myself. I don't put trust in my money. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When all the rest of it fails and crumbles and shatters, he'll be there. Hey, hello. Hello, English. <laughs> hello, Nederlands. Uh, hier zijn uh, Alco en Mirjam en uh, ja, zoals we beloofd hadden zouden we uh, vanavond even live gaan zodat we kunnen uh, kletsen met jullie. Hey everyone, this is uh, Alco en Mirjam. We promise to go live tonight. Uh, yeah, so you guys can chat with us. Um, yeah, I just shared that video from Bill Billy Graham and, and, and for me that really explains the time we're in. Um, we are in a really strange time where nobody knows where this is going and there's a lot of conspiracy going on and non-conspiracy and I don't know what to name it but there's a lot going on um, but I do know like God said to Habakkuk you don't have any clue what's going on if I would tell you you couldn't handle it you couldn't cope with it so um, and I, I think that's where we are and we have to put our trust in the Lord and um, yeah, that, that's the only thing we can do. Dus ja, ik, ik, ik liet net een video zien van Billy Graham. En ik weet niet hoe goed jullie Engels is. Maar um, ja, voor ons is dat echt een video. Nou, voor mij in ieder geval wel persoonlijk. Die mij heel geraakt heeft. Juist de, tijdens deze ja, vreemde tijd van corona. En um, nou, ik wou hem even met jullie delen. Omdat gewoon inderdaad, zoals hij zei. Uh, uh, God zei op een gegeven moment tegen Habakkuk. Van joh, je kunt wel vragen wat ik van plan ben. Maar dat kan jij helemaal niet aan. En... Ik denk dat het ook met deze tijd uh, geldt. Ik geloof sowieso dat we in de eindtijd leven. Dus we weten helemaal niet ja, wat er gaat gebeuren. Alleen de Vader weet wanneer Jezus terugkomt, staat er in de Bijbel. Dus um, er zijn wel een heleboel dingen wat je kunt herkennen volgens de Bijbel. Uh, maar in ieder geval, uh, ja, ik, ik wou dat met jullie delen. Omdat dit ook wel een van de dingen is, um, ja, helaas, waarom wij ja, terug gaan verhuizen, denk ik. Hè? Covid, dat is wel... Een van de redenen geweest waarom wij moesten gaan nadenken van goh, um, um, ja, wat gebeurt er met onze missie toch? Ja, ja ik denk um, um, dat sowieso, het zou eens even goed om te vermelden denk ik dat we um, vanavond ook live zijn. Maar eventuele vragen die jullie hebben, misschien naar aanleiding van onze nieuwsbrief, misschien naar aanleiding van het bericht wat je op Facebook hebt gezien. Mocht je vragen hebben over waarom we teruggaan of over ons of... Nou, welke vraag je dan ook hebt over af te bieden misschien, uh, dat kan vanavond ook gesteld worden. Uh, het zal gedeeltelijk Engels zijn, het zal gedeeltelijk Nederlands zijn. Um, for the English guys who are watching, uh, good to see you guys. Uh, we're live tonight um, to give you guys the opportunity to ask us some questions. So if you have any questions about after beat, about our mission, about our plans to move back to the Netherlands, about our newsletter. Um, just feel free to ask and use uh, the chat to just write down your questions and um, we'll try to answer them uh, as soon as we can. Uh, there's a little delay, uh, so if you type your questions, it might take a while for us to see it, yeah. um, but we'll answer them uh, in the end anyway. Yeah. Um, even terug naar Nederlands, ik moet even schakelen. <laughs> um, maar uh, we hebben inderdaad afgelopen weken een nieuwsbrief uitgegooid waarin we uh, nou ja, eigenlijk hebben openbaar gemaakt dat we bezig zijn met het plannen van onze terugreis in Nederland. Um, voor ons is hier maanden uh, aan, aan bidden, vasten, nadenken, onderzoeken, uh, is eraan vooraf gegaan. Uh, dus deze beslissing is niet over één nacht ijs genomen. Dus het is ook heel lastig om 
dat traject van een half jaar samen te vatten in een, uh, nou ja, zelfs een 20 minuten durend filmpje is eigenlijk al te kort. Ja. Uh, of de nieuwsbrief. Dus vandaar dat we ook uh, nu live wilden gaan om uh, met jullie in gesprek te zijn. Dus laat ons alsjeblieft weten um, waar we iets over kunnen vertellen, wat je graag uh, zou willen horen of waar je benieuwd naar bent. Um, ja. Ja, en als ik... je iets anders wilt delen, iets zelf waar we misschien iets over kunnen delen of uh, nou ja, noem het maar. Ja. We zijn eigenlijk een beetje op zoek naar interactie. Dus, ja. um, nou, we, 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 zijn, uh, we hebben de pagina uh, meerdere keren gedeeld, dus um, als je reageert kun je het beste even naar uh, de Afterbeat uh, Facebook pagina gaan, want dan weet je zeker dat de reactie binnenkomt. Um, Oh, de mok leek een beetje groot. <laughs> Hij is ook heel groot. Ja, 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 ja. Hier in Schotland is dit vrij normaal. Ja, ja, ja. <laughs> dit is een normale koffie. Daarom gaan we dus een koffiehuis uh, beginnen in Vietnam waarschijnlijk. Maar daar komen we nog uh, sowieso wel op. Maar als jullie uh, reageren, zoals Fokko die heeft nou gereageerd uh, in de chat. Als je live, de li we hebben een livestream gedeeld van Afterbeat, van de Afterbeat pagina. Dus je moet echt naar de Afterbeat pagina gaan om... Um, um, ja, o, o, om een reactie te plaatsen. Uh, we hebben nu de eerste reactie binnen. Beeld en geluid is goed, alleen de mok leek zo groot, zeiden ze net, dus vandaar dat meer dat zei. Maar dat uh, klopt wel aardig. Um, als wij terug zijn in Nederland, dan vind ik elke keer dat die mokken zo klein zijn. <laughs> dus uh, ja, twee ja, slokken dus... en dan is het weg. Ik weet nog inderdaad hoe we terug waren, dat we even naar een koffiecaféetje gingen ergens in Vietnam. Ja, ja. En dan bestel je een koffie en dat is echt oprecht twee slokjes en dan is je kopje leeg. Ja. En dat waren we niet meer gewend. Um, dus uh, ja, wij nemen onze grote mok heerlijk mee terug naar Nederland. Ja, dat hebben we ja. ons wel. Nou, nogmaals, als je dus uh, reageert op de post op onze tijdlijn of ergens anders, dan kan het zijn dat we het nu niet lezen. Ik, uh, ik probeer het in de gaten te houden met mijn mobieltje en ik uh, kan hier op de... Op de... Uh, scherm nog wel wat zien, maar uh, ja, we willen graag echt uh, <laughs> ja, alles beantwoorden. Um, nou ja, wat is er aan de hand? Uh, misschien dat iedereen, niet iedereen het filmpje heeft gezien, maar um, nou ja, uh, nou, wanneer is het begonnen? Uh, februari. Um, nou, laten we gewoon bij het begin beginnen en uh, voor, voor, voor de missie, als we het daarover hebben. Um, um, ja. In februari um, heb ik mijn laatste evenement gehad en dat was fantastisch. Dat was ongelooflijk. We gingen uh, vier scholen in. Uh, er waren meer dan 400 uh, jongeren op het concert afgekomen. En, en hoeveel reacties er waren van mensen, van jongeren die hun hart wilden geven aan Jezus Christus. was overweldigend. Ik heb uh, zelf nog nooit een evenement georganiseerd waarbij meer dan 140 kids uh, hun handen mogen staken. En... Uh, nou ja, dat is gewoon fantastisch. Nou moet ik erbij zeggen, hè, dan, dan begint het pas. En het is heel moeilijk om die 140 ook echt te kunnen planten in een kerk. Daar hebben we wel wat middelen voor gevonden. En daar komen we vanavond ook nog wel weer op terug. Maar het jongerencentrum hier in, in, in Dunfermlin, waar Mirjam ook werkt, is daarin heel erg belangrijk. En um, ik zwaai even naar Jesse, die heeft gezwaaid. Maar wij kunnen gewoon live zwaaien. Maar in ieder geval, um, nou, na dat evenement hadden wij heel erg het gevoel van, uh, nou ja, ik persoonlijk vooral van het, het stop bij de message. En, en, en het voelde zo verrang, want de message, dat was mijn droom. Om daar te werken was mijn droom. Um, dus ja, dat, dat was voor mij wel heel erg lastig om die beslissing te maken. En de beslissing was dat ik na september, dan zouden we dus een heel groot project hebben dat ik dan zou stoppen. Zo so voor de people in uh, English, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry Joyce, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to uh, keep up. Um, I'm gonna tell the exact same thing I just told the Dutch well, folks. Maybe we can just share the whole story in English because the Dutch one is available in the little movie and in yes, the newsletter. Right. So that's if we right. just tell the story in English now yes. for the English people. That's a very good idea. And you are updated as well. Yes. So what has happened? Um, like everybody knows and especially Joyce uh, is in our church, uh, we had an amazing event in February. We, we did it, well, it was just amazing. We went to four schools, uh, two cities actually, I forgot to tell that. And one city we went, it was really small, it was a small concert, but everybody, everybody, <laughs> sorry, uh, Mel. sorry Mel, we're, we're keeping it with the Dutch. <laughs> no, we're stuck with yeah. English at the moment. <laughs> but in Kilcuddy, um, everybody responded to the gospel and in the Firmlin, 140 kids responded to the gospel. And I never organized an event before where I saw so many kids um, yeah, making a decision to follow Christ. And 
um, that's not it. Um, you, you need a follow-up and uh, we have a great follow-up with Synergy where Melanie is a youth leader. Um, we have Heart and Sound where Mayhem is working and those two charities are just amazing. And uh, last year we saw one kid um, uh, in particular in our church uh, getting baptized because of the event. Uh, we heard from Heart and Sound that some kids ended up in Grace Church. So that's really why we came over. That's why we came over. And unfortunately, last February, um, after, well, I think two weeks after the whole event, um, we, we were having a lockdown. And I was speaking with Toby yesterday from Triple uh, O, the rapper, and I said, I don't even think we spoke about COVID, you know, maybe about oh, that thing in China, but that, that's it. So at that moment, we didn't realize that something like that would happen. So anyway, during that time, I made a decision that I felt that was God one Yeah, well, God was making us ready for a new move. We didn't know exactly what it was, but uh, I asked the message if it would be okay if I would stop in September. That was the last project. I didn't want to let them down and um, doing all the work. Uh, so I said, I'm, I'm going to commit to this higher tour, this big tour in Edinburgh and Glasgow. And then um, I want to move on to another ministry. And well, I, I was thinking to start uh, after Beat Scotland, of course. Um, but anyway, um, then COVID was there. So that was a really weird happening. Um, so it accelerated uh, me stopping stopping work well, st to stop working with the message because it didn't make sense to stay until September because it was a big chance the higher tour wouldn't go on because we couldn't go to schools and invite them to join the higher tour because yeah the, the time was tight and and right after the summer holidays this higher tour was going on so I left earlier at the message and then we were sitting here in our house and we were like well, I, I think I said something stupid like, you know what, maybe we should just pack our bags and just go now. You know, the, it's a couple of days uh, when the last boat to the Netherlands leaves and then we're stuck. So, but anyway, like Miriam said, we prayed, we fasted a lot and well, God really said no. And um, so we stayed and we prayed and fasted and, and lots of stuff happened. Uh, during the fasting and some friends like Melanie and Tim started to fast as well with us and Jim and uh, uh, um, Laurie uh, started to fast with us from Calvary Chapel and um, we, we started to fast and they well I, well, I love that they fasted with us to uh, find answers and uh, one of the answers was um, well that we would need to start an after be charity here so I started working on that and a beautiful thing on top of that, we could start also a charity in the USA. So that was just amazing because now we can get funding from the USA. But there is still no schools were going on. So uh, later on, the schools were coming back a little bit. And um, one day I was I was just sitting in the kitchen and, and God really said to me, like, you know, there's just one person. If you would go one day from back to the Netherlands, then Tim Thompson is the guy who needs to follow you up follow up and and I I called him right away and he was really excited and he said you know be, be, well before if you would ask me a few years ago uh, I wouldn't well I wouldn't be happy or excited to start an after beat charity but now I've seen you doing the work so I'm like yeah that that's really maybe something I should do that this feels really good and for me it feels really right as well because Five years ago, I met this amazing guy in the Netherlands. Um, I booked him for uh, a festival with my brother and uh, he played there. We had a lot of fun <laughs> sharing kips and stuff like that. We, we, <laughs> we were making fun with lots of names and, and we made rhymes with it. It was so much fun. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was it was amazing. And then I, I invited him to an afterbeat gig in the Netherlands in Club Jinx in Van Damme. And he was like, Alco, oh, we need that in Scotland. And that's where it kind of started. Um, so it's so it feels so good that Tim is now involved with afterbeat Scotland. And during the way, all these kind of things started to fall in place where me um, started to develop kind of like a feeling like well, what, what does it stop us now to go back? Yeah, I think when COVID 
uh, really hit the UK and the schools were closing down and the full lockdown began. Um, I think for everyone involved, you know, everyone everyone uh, in the UK as well might maybe recognize some of this, that um, when you sit down, when your whole life basically, um, it doesn't stop obviously, um, but you know, the life that you used to live uh, kind of comes to an end and you have to develop a whole new kind of thing. At least that's what it was for us. You know, we started working from home. Uh, my work at Heart and Sounds uh, from one day to another day just couldn't go on. Um, Alco needed to work from home because the school mission stopped. And uh, we had to think about our mission from there. And um, um, I felt a bit homesick as well at that point because uh, we were planning on going back of course to the Netherlands and at that point we didn't know when the next time was going to be uh, because the whole lockdown happened. Um, you know all these things happened and it just made me realize that we really had to um, think over our mission again. Uh, we had to think of okay God what's going to be the next step because everything that we've planned, everything that we thought that you were planning is just coming to an end right here. Um, and we, re we really wanted to do what God was asking from us and like Alco said before we wanted to go back to the Netherlands at the point that we were like okay we can still go now you know in a couple of days we can't anymore let's just go and then God spoke loud and clear to us like you know now is not the time it's not the time yet um, so after that I just started started to look for more answers like okay God what is going to be your right timing here what should we do next um, and over the months the next couple of months uh, right after that moment like during the praying the fasting the searching the um, talking to people close to us, uh, I really ve felt that God was confirming um, us uh, that it was okay for us to um, eventually move back to the Netherlands. Uh, and at, at that point, we didn't know when, we didn't know how, we didn't know why yet. Uh, but it was something that we recognized from the way God was calling us to Scotland when we were still in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. It was the same way. It, it happened the same way so it was something that I recognized like you know it might be time actually to talk about these things so at one point I said I'll go down I was like you know um, I know you're still focused on the firm I know you're still focused on the mission here but I really do feel that we need to discuss our plans for moving back to Netherlands because I kind of feel that it's time to um, plan out the mission back in the Netherlands um, so yeah I think we started praying for that at that point and just um, trying to find God ways, um, God's ways in, in everything that we were planning ahead and um, I think one conf confirmation after another just started to happen there was and one of the most important things that I prayed for uh, which was different the, the first time that we moved over uh, was our kids. Um, yeah. Joshua is almost 10 now, Hannah is 7 uh, and the first time we moved over you know there were Joshua was 7, Hannah was just 4 um, and it was different then, but I can see that both of our kids, the oldest one though, Nora, of course, she's she's just one, she's fine. Um, but Hannah and Josh, you know, they develop their own little yeah. bubbles, their own little friendships. Um, and they have done so well here in Scotland. They love Scotland, honestly. Um, so at one point I was really worried, like, you know, if I want to go back to the Netherlands, and God is confirming that we can go back to the Netherlands, you know, how are we going to tell this to our kids? Because I was really worried that they wouldn't go back. Um, um, so I started praying for that as well. We discussed it. And then um, I just kept on praying. Like, God, if, if this really is your plan, if you are trying to warm us up to go back to the Netherlands, please do the same to our kids as well. It needs to be like a mutual decision from all of us. Um, so if we go back, we know, you know, God um, prepared us for this step. Um, and like I said, I kind of expected the kids to tell us like, oh, you know, we're not feeling to move country again, or you know, I don't want to leave my friends behind or that kind of stuff. But the opposite happens. From the first day, we decided to share this with the kids and we decided to start to pray with them about this. Um, yeah, they, they were just so open to it. Yeah. And they really felt like, you know, this is something that we want to do. Um, and over the months after that, it just that, that, that urge to go back, that um, desire to go back to the Netherlands became stronger with them as well, uh, which was really powerful to see. Yeah. Um, and it's really something I'm really thankful for because it needed to be a mutual decision. That's why I asked God and 
oh god's been providing in that like big time it was so good to see that he was preparing not just us but also our kids and it's even something that i said to god like god if you want us to stay here you know if i'm not listening right if it's just my heart and my desire that's speaking right here you know just talk to our kids just let us know through them that they want to stay and we have to um maybe reconsider again uh, but none of that happens so um Oh, there's been so many things that's been happening. Well, uh, just help me out here. A well, couple of more confirmations that God gave. Well, after the fasting and praying, um, we started to think. Well, I, I, at least I started to think about the Netherlands, like what what would be needed. And one of the things that what what was missing in the Netherlands with our charity and especially in our hometown because we are working on more projects in the Netherlands, but mainly in partnership with youth centers, Christian youth centers, and for example, Youth for Christ, stuff like that. Um, but in Veendam, where our heart is, there's no youth center. And the gap between the church and the event that we did, where we reached a lot of kids, is too big. And, and we talked about that lots of times. And um, I talked with another charity in, the, uh, in, in Veendam, in our town, where they had during the summer a child week where lots of kids came, but again, the, 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 to bring them to the next stage is so difficult, but we learned a lot over here. Yeah. So we prayed really like, okay, God, but if you wanna let us move back, you know, please start to make it more sense to us what, what we should do. And I think this should be a youth center. So yeah, that's what we started to pray for. And, um, well, we're now in the process of funding and, and, and things are going so well. We got a lot of money from one church to start these fundings and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, they invested time in it. We had a chat with lots of people in my hometown. They were all excited to do this. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. And it's going to be like a mission center. We're going to just uh, um, hire a store in the center of Veendam, that's the idea, and this is going to be a mission center, and you know, one of the things in this mission center will be the youth center, but also one of the things will be a coffee shop, and we're going to be bring kind of like a UK style coffee shop back to our hometown, because it's really needed, uh, we, may, we need m bigger cups, <laughs> so um, yeah, I called them when I just moved over. Man, oh man, you're serving, serving buckets of cups. But anyway, um, yeah, so we we have been praying. I think that's the yeah. that's the main thing we have been praying for, except for all the details. You know, like you know, just use our kids as well. Yeah, yeah. show us what way to go. Uh, my main prayer has been, and I think it's yours as well. We've prayed that over and over and over again. Is that God just show us the open doors? Yes, you know, the open and doors. If, yes. If, I, we just prayed for doors to open, um, and at first we just started praying for open doors generally like you know it could be open doors here in scotland like to show yeah. us yeah, the directions also, to go that's yes, what we said yes, to god yes. just god we want to be used by you we want to work in your kingdom yeah uh, we are missionaries which is such a privilege um and sometimes i honestly just don't know why he chose us but he did so uh he has faith in us uh, yeah. in our mission and in what we're doing so we just wanted to know which door would open up next um well, your work was opening yeah, up. Yeah, well, um, as, as, you know, as soon as we yeah. started praying for open doors, what we could see yeah, was stuff that, like that yeah. doors in Scotland for us as a family were closing. Yeah. Uh, and doors in the Netherlands, like like I was saying, like the mission center in the Netherlands, the youth center. Um, developments at my work at the moment, I still work for a Christian charity uh, and I work as a counselor for people uh, with addiction problems, which is something I love to do. Uh, and a couple of opportunities there uh, opened up as well, which is for our financial situation a very good thing. Um, uh, I, I don't. Know. It's just I. I just maybe we should have made a list before yeah, we yeah. Oh, no. went live because so much stuff happened and it's quite tough to think of them right now in the moment. Uh, but I think the main thing is that uh, like the doors here started to close for yes, us yes. and the doors back in the Netherlands started to open. I think that's when we realized, you know, God is pushing us in that direction back to the Netherlands. So I think about a month ago now when you started working on the youth center and all those doors were opening as well. And yeah. uh, I was working 
hard on to get the funding in and you know to get the people uh, excited about it and it looks so good at the moment like you know like god is blessing that plan and it's good to see that he's preparing thing done for it he's preparing us for it he's preparing volunteers for it. he's preparing uh crew for it like you know um can work at their center uh he's giving loads of ideas he's giving loads of uh vision yes uh, divine vision honestly it's it's beautiful to see how God created something to um, serve Feng Dom yeah. um, with, with, the, with the knowledge, with the wisdom that we gained during those two and a half we were here in Scotland. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like a um, mission is going to a higher level here and that's, yeah. that's only a thing that God can invent, I guess. That's, that's such a beautiful thing. And, um it's time it's 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 yeah. absolute it's time and the mission here doesn't stop at all no so if you're watching and you're like you know what's going to happen in scotland like Alco said before maybe you missed that because you're uh you um you're watching a bit later the mission here after be uk will is, go on will go on yeah um and we found perfect partners in our uh, amazing friends melanie and tim thompson yes. uh, who are willing to take over um and we trust them with it honestly they're, yes. they're, they're they're the right persons for it um and the way god led that as well it's it's just beautiful it's just yeah. beautiful um so yeah alcohol will still be involved of course you know, he will come over when there are mission weeks and uh whenever he's needed here uh and honestly we have loads of new family here as well uh that we really wanted to see as much as possible um but yeah, I think we are more needed now in Vietnam, at least that's what God has been telling us and he's pointing us in that direction. And like I said before, we are missionaries. Um, and sometimes it's tough to be a missionary, you know, financial or, um, you know, even in a family life, sometimes you can feel it's quite tough. Um, but I think we both kind of decided that um, it has been so good to see God uh, as such a providing loving father mm. uh, and we have learned well, so so much yes. uh, that we would never go back to um, a non-missionary life yeah. we wanted to keep working in his kingdom to work for his yeah. good uh, so we keep on doing that and maybe only... god will send us again somewhere else i don't know we want to be no open for that. if he does he does mm. uh, you know he sent us to scotland and it was loud and clear um, he's sending us back home and that's loud and clear as well. Yeah. So if he's going to speak up again and he sends us somewhere else, we'll know. Um, well, one of, one of so the yeah, things we'll I've learned, I, I'm doing now a Bible school with uh, Jim Arnold from, uh, from uh, Calvary Chapel and I really enjoy it. But one of the uh, things, uh, the phrases they use in their church uh, is, uh, I think it's by the founder of Chuck Smith, he said, uh, you know, when you know God is there and you, you, how you can test it, you know, you can test when God is uh, sending you on a mission. And it's just one phrase. When God guides, he provides. And that's what we, yeah. that's what we, that's what we, <laughs> Sunderland, <laughs> we have great missionaries in Sunderland. We don't need you. <laughs> to move to Sunderland. Although you I would love, I, you can do it, Sharia. Yeah, although I would love to, yeah. No, but um, um, yeah. When, when God guides, He provides, um, and I think Sharia and uh, Sean can talk about that as well. And this is what happening is what, what's happening now in Feindam. God is providing now in Feindam because He's guiding in Feindam, but He's also providing for Melanie and Tim soon. I, I'm totally sure. Uh, God is going to provide because he's guiding and it goes the other way, way around as well. You can test it. If he guides, he will provide. And I totally believe that because we've seen it. And like Miriam said, I don't want to want to live another way in life anymore. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean, for example, when we go back that I won't go back into healthcare for a while to build tents like Paul did. Paul built a tent and oh well I think he hated it because well I don't like to go back in healthcare to just to do this although I love the work but I just want to do mission 24 7 but Paul sometimes went back and started to build tents to make some money 
so he could go on another mission. And I think that that goes with this as well. Sometimes he provides with a job as well. So when God guides and he provides, he gives you sometimes an opportunity to make some money elsewhere yeah. just to add to the money you, you already have. Yeah. At this moment, um, it's not needed yet, but um, I do believe that we're going to, well, we, we, we do believe that some supporters will go soon and uh, God will give us new supporters. And I ask, I really want to ask the people in Scotland, um, I think the Netherlands, you know, spent more than 20,000, I think, on supporting us for over two years. Uh, it would be so cool if Scotland could support us now going back to the Netherlands and you don't need to sponsor us our whole life but it would be so cool if Scotland could reinvest in the Netherlands as well so we could go on in our mission um, but I, only when when it's on your heart you know if it's not on your heart and you have over other charities on your heart please give you know I think it's really good to give and the Bible tells you when you give it God will bless you double so yeah, you know, I, I really hope and pray that you want to give to us and uh, give regularly because it would help Melanie and Tim as well in their mission if we can find support for Afterbeat here in Scotland. And the idea is that we're coming back every year for a school mission. And to be honest, when we moved over, we both felt a really calling to Dunfermline. But because God gave me a job with a message that's that was such a dream and still is, and I hate my heart is aching that I left the message because God asked me to. Um, but that was for the nation Scotland. And I really feel that um, um, God actually did call us for Dunfermline yeah. and for five. Definitely. And to be honest, when we move back, we still with Melanie and Tim can continue the missions here in Dunfermline and Cocody. We, we can't stop that. And yeah, well, we have Melanie and Tim, but we have Sharia, we have uh, 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 Sean, we have uh, uh, Steve. We have we have an amazing team over here. So it's never going to stop over here. Uh, if just it's to let you me. know, by the way, Andrew, we've seen your question. I'll come back to that in a second. Oh, sorry. And I just want to add to what Alko is saying about our mission here. Uh, that I do believe as well that we've been called to the film for a reason. We've been called to fight for a reason. Yes. And before we left, um, and we were just getting the first details in um, um, about what God wanted us to do here. Um, one of the things that He gave us was um, the Bible first from uh, is Hosea. It Hosea? Mm -hmm. Hosea ten verse twelve, uh, which starts with the words "unplow new gra uh, yes. ground." Uh, and unplow new ground has been, um, and th that first has been coming over and over and over and over again back to us. Um, and when I look back now on those two and a half years that we've been here, you know, we, yeah. we honestly, we, we have cried about this. Like, God, you, you want us to go back, but what have we actually done here? You know, we wanted to do so much more. And um, I think that's kind of like our human flesh just you know trying to um at least that's what i felt like I, I wanted to do more and sometimes i feel like i disappointed people or i let yeah. god down because we wanted to do more and yeah. things were difficult sometimes but when i look at that first task that god gave us when we moved over like unplow new grants uh ground sorry yeah. unplow new grounds um I'm like yes that's what we did you know we were here for two years and especially alco you know in, in running the mission uh work in the schools in in setting up um uh the youth work uh mission between several churches you know building bridges between churches um that has never been done before here in infirmary so that was new ground that's been unplowed oh, it was and really it keeps hard. Yeah. on going yeah. you know it's not something that we just leave behind and like that that's it you know chapter closed no but it's the it's the start of a new book it's yes. not just a chapter close, but it's like the start of a whole new story that God is writing yes. in Dunfermline. And I think it's a privilege that we could be a part of it, that we could be like like kickstarters in this and fire starters in this. And that, you know, God is now choosing the right people in the right place. You know, Mel and Tim and the whole yes. team that has been helping us out here uh, to just, you know, move on. And um, we did the unplowing part. They can do the sewing and 
the harvesting. I think that's the. Well, if you but if you talk about that Bible verse and you look at the Dutch. Uh, kind of King James version of it. It's saying ontginnen. Uh, it's a, it's a really old Dutch word, yeah. um, um, but it's it means actually that sometimes a farmer has his field and he used it, he sawed and and, and he he got the harvest in. But sometimes after a while, the 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 ground is less fruitful, and. Um, when that happens, a farmer leaves the ground sometimes for one or two years. And doesn't do anything with the ground because then the uh, it, it's more fruitful when you sow it again and yeah. when you get the harvest in. And this is really what us what what hits us uh, hit it us when we left. Like it was it, it kind of like said to to us like okay be prepared that that, that, that there there could be a chance that you would go back. Yeah. Um, we never said like that's going to happen because there were people telling us as well like you're going for two years and then you're yeah. going to leave and well that's pretty close to what happens two right now, now. to yeah. two and a half years so also people said you're going to go and you're going to learn and you're going to come uh, come and bring it back it's also maybe happening that it looks like that all is happening so um, prophecy is still present day and it's it's happening and god gave it through scripture to us through people and it's happening right now yeah. and maybe we have to go back to the netherlands to vain down because maybe the harvest is ripe now maybe it's the the fields are green to get it in um because that was well, that's what actually that bible verse means as well and um yeah um when we left the day we left uh the the, the last service uh of our church was the last uh, our goodbye service was the last service of our home church in Vietnam. that was really really painful with one bible scripture god gave us yeah. during that time was uh, that jesus said that sometimes something needs to die first before it comes back to life and i think that's going to happen in Vietnam. yeah that's um, how we feel it that because that, that first that yes. particular first was one of the first verses God gave us uh, when we were starting to investigate like God, yeah. what is our next step back and the doors in the Netherlands started to open and this verse came up and we yes. both really felt that God was speaking through the verse and we had to think of Dortmutting the church that we left back in Veendam that that died before we left and we're coming back now and I'm, we were like you know how cool would it be if we can be part of that revival Yes. Uh, you know that's 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 coming to Vendam. We really mm -hmm. want to just bring back whatever we can to just yeah. make sure that people in Vendam are safe as well. And I and we still want a revival for Dunfermline Absolutely. as well. You know, we we brought stuff from the Netherlands like FTB, but also partnership with churches. And I think when 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 we look at our hometown, there's one thing that stands out. They work together as churches in Vendam, and that's just so amazing. They work together, they partner, and that's what we see now here in Dunfermline as well. Yeah. Uh, we see even more churches willing to partner with us for future missions. And of course, it's all on a hold now, but I do believe one day uh, we can do stuff. Um, we're going to do online stuff uh, like this, but then we're going to do other stuff, live interviews with artists. We're going to do lessons in the future online. We're going to do lots of stuff during the COVID time, but I do believe one day it will open again. And you know, an hour flight from the Netherlands, Scotland, you know, it's so close. Uh, and and wow, well, this is the capital city. This has been the capital city of Scotland, and we really believe that there's some power in that. You know, this is the original capital city and area of Scotland. So I do believe God works in mysterious ways. So when revival comes in Scotland, it will come from this kingdom of five, I believe, because this is supposed to be the kingdom so why wouldn't it start over here in in the place where nobody expects it and I, that's what i believe for vrindam as well and that's what after beat loves as well the under uh, kind of the underdog places you know all the missions are going on in these big cities big towns you know but we like places like sunderland not newcastle we like sunderland we don't like edinburgh we like dunfermline you know we like kokodi we don't like to go and do a mission in Groningen, we want to do it in Veendam because those small places need it as well. You know, they 
it's so easy to forget those places and invest in these big missions and big cities but you know what there are people out there living in these small villages and they really need jesus as well and after beat is not about big events it's about the quality of the gospel it's about sharing the love of christ with a quality that's outstanding with a win-win situation where the price is really low and we can offer that for churches so everyone can do mission and and we're raising support so we can even offer it for free when it's needed because i do believe everyone should hear this gospel and and that's what the bible is saying that that god wants to know everybody to know about his love and what he did for us with his son so yeah that's really um yeah that that that's that's what the heart of afterbeat is so we will come back and Absolutely. we have also now uh interest um well interest interest we are talking with people from estonia and um uh good question i don't know actually about the, uh, the advanced court really good question christian andrew we, we should, should talk, talk about that yeah we should talk about we that will. yeah i'm sorry for that 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 didn't go on the last uh, couple of months yeah. um it was a bit tough to... yeah it was tough my focus wasn't on that and and uh, because i left the message but advance i love it i want to well it would be good to k take it on and i want to bring it back to the netherlands as well because yeah. it's just a great thing uh, to do but we're talking we, we have to spoken with Estonia we have to, to spoken with people in Jacksonville Florida uh, there's a guy in Colorado really excited to do stuff with us so you know we want to go where God is sending us um, so um, yeah we, we kind of want to stop chasing too much you know but see where God is opening the doors like Miriam was saying we, we well the Bible is saying that God is opening doors no one can close and he closes doors no. who no one can open, you know, and that's how we live right now, you know, that's that's how God and works, honestly, you know. it sounds amazing, but trust me, <laughs> we are just that's human beings yeah. and yeah. we're struggling with that as well. We don't know all the answers, we don't know everything, we're not perfect at all. We need Jesus, maybe even more than you do, yeah. honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, like God, like, uh, yeah, God has been so providing to us and he's speaking, he's been speaking so loud and clear. Yeah. And like Alka was saying, we are, we are just looking for those doors and, um, yeah yeah it's been good yeah and the it's doors he's, he's showing the doors like like this I, that's why i love that phrase from chuck smith like God, where god guides he provides that's that's so if that's if you're gonna if you want to step out in faith and do stuff you know if god doesn't provide he doesn't guide you know but you need to try sometime you know because otherwise you don't know if he guides and if he provides that's what we have seen. Um, I know, for example, when we uh, we knew we were called to Scotland, we put our house for sale. Everyone was selling their house like crazy in a week or whatever, except for us. And we were <laughs> like, but our house is amazing. We just refurbished <laughs> the whole thing. We don't have a bad taste, I think. You know, we, we have a nice house. Why, why is no one interested in our house? And it kept on and on and on. And then the house was sold and we were with Mel and Tim in Manchester and we got a phone call from one of our sponsors and he said, sorry that I let you wait so long for my answer to sponsor you guys or, or support you guys, but I have something else for you guys. And that was a job for me. And that was right at the moment when we sold our house, you know, again, God provided, he gave us lots of sponsors, but on top of that, he gave me an extra job so the move to scotland would be a little bit easier so god provided when he was guiding and it's the other way around as well he guided and he provided and you know we have so much testimonies about that and like me have said we don't want to go back into the normal yeah life there's, there's nothing anymore. wrong with the normal no. life honestly you can no. lead your you can lead your life you know with god yeah. even though if, if it's not in a missionary kind of thing and it's not that i'm like you know missionaries are perfect not at all that's not what we're saying at all but it's just something that we experienced um that has added so much to our personal relationship with god to our yeah. marriage to our family yeah, life sure. um to our deeper purpose in life as well um, and like I said, to just be so dependent 
uh, on God, living your life, you know, we honestly, oh, we, we have been in so many situations that they were like, you know, if, if God is not going to show up, we're finished here. Um, and that, that's, that can be tricky, that can be tough. Uh, but on the other hand, it has been so good to see that every single time that we were at that stage, God showed up and he showed up massively and he never let us down, not, not for a single no. second. And even though we thought we could do better, you know, that we were doubting his timing or that mm. we were doubting his ways, it always um, showed in the end that God was the one in charge and he was just the best director of the story of our lives. Mm. Um, he never failed us. And uh, just the idea that we have to let go of that, you know, in that dependency that we're living in right now and just being on a mission and just giving something of our time, of our efforts back uh, to basically thank him for what he has done for us, but also uh, trying to uh, give what we have found to someone else who hasn't found it yet. You know, it's the greatest gift in life that you can give someone. Uh, how selfish would it be if we would keep it to ourselves? You know, we love God so much and he's been so good to us. Uh, and the Bible tells us that he loves everyone the same. You know, he, we're all his children. He loves us so much, you know, and we should make disciples. We should let people know that God cares for them and that there's more into life than just living here on earth and what our earth is at the moment. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we're still keep on going and we're still looking for more mission in life because that's what we really want to do. Yeah. Um, I just want to go back to Andrew Perry's uh, question uh, before we forget that. Sorry, Andrew, it took so long to get back to that. Um, you ask, as you say, that there is a higher level of mission for youth in Scotland. What is it like in the Netherlands? Um, I know I mentioned that a little while ago when I was telling about us moving back to the Netherlands and that I felt that the mission is going to be lifted to a higher level here. Uh, with everything that's uh, in, in place. And I feel that for the Netherlands too, uh, like we see that God is developing the work here in Scotland as well. I uh, we really feel that the youth center, the mission center that Alco is setting up in Veendam is definitely a higher level when it comes to bringing the gospel in and around Veendam. Um, it, has been, it is something that we tried to do for years. Uh, loads of people stood up and tried mm. to do something like this. We even had a youth center uh, back in the old days, mm -hmm. uh, but then it collapsed and it, it just didn't work out. And people have been talking about this for ages and it just never started. And now finally we see that um, it's happening. It's actually happening at the moment. So yes, I do believe uh, we're reaching a deeper level here in mission life and that God is, um, yeah, I don't know what he's doing, honestly, but he's on the move, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Especially, uh, uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 God is totally on the move. I, yes, I agree. Definitely. I, I think that the, 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 what happened, well, what, what, what we're doing now in uh, Veendam, we're working on this mission center. So we hope, um, uh, well, to reach a lot of people over there, of course, in Veendam, in my hometown, but also in the Netherlands. I think the climate of uh, the Netherlands and Scotland are quite the same uh, Andrew um, yeah, I think so too um, I, I think there are so much similarities and, and to be honest I do think that's why God sent it us up here you know yeah. and um, I do also think he sent the guy up here not from Amsterdam or Rotterdam or The Hague but a guy from Veendam a place you never heard <laughs> before from before I guess so you know um, because I like these on the dark places you know these places where well, you can find them on the map, but they're not so, you know, obvious. Um, you know, if a good example for me uh, is still Sunderland. You know, um, you know, it, it, it it's quite big actually. Sunderland is quite big, but it it's overshadowed by this city of Newcastle, what is quite kind of the, the the capital of the northeast. But you know, we we are connected with Ignite Missions over there. Uh, we partner with them and those guys are amazing in lessons. It's just crazy how good they are at that. But it just shows me like, but Sunderland needs the gospel too, you know. We have a big city, Groningen, but Veendam needs the gospel too. We have a big city, Edinburgh, just over the bridge, but Dunfermline needs the gospel too. And Kilcuddy needs it too. St. Andrew needs it too, you know. But God called us for this, so I, I do believe um, 
uh, for both countries there's the same need and also on top of that if um, I speak a lot with uh, uh, Americans and uh, the funny thing is what they say is Scotland and the Netherlands especially Scotland and the Netherlands it's quite funny actually those both nations send a lot of missionaries to the US if you go to the US you see lots of Methodist churches or churches who have like Dutch backgrounds or Dutch heritage uh, Dutch names or whatever it's 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 there are a lot but there are also a lot of Scottish uh, uh, heritage over there and especially in the in the church and th that only also shows me that it's really weird actually that um, Netherlands and Scotland sent so many missionaries abroad but in my opinion they're maybe the one of well they're at least in the top 10 countries in the world who need the gospel so badly because of their liberal views and um yeah about a lot of stuff um well i we, we just see that you know the the the, the bible is telling uh, call, uh the, 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 talking about that that people who are not christians and didn't come to christ they, they are still blind and and that's what we see that's that's kind of what we see is not really to do with liberalism but mainly with that that lots of people are still blind and uh yeah that's worrying me sometimes um yeah, yeah. so well i think in a couple of minutes um we have to uh to wrap it up yeah uh, but if there are some questions yeah, please quest, uh, that's question that's what i wanted us. to say if you have any questions left that you'd like to ask us about us moving back to netherlands about the mission about our ideas about our vision mm -hmm. about uh, what god has been doing so far just fire away a uh, use the chat so we can still answer them yes. uh, otherwise we're uh, we're gonna end this uh, live stream soon i guess yeah. uh, i just want to mention again for the people who are just uh, coming in or um yeah, just to um, use the the things that alcohol uh, has said as well um, about becoming a financial partner of our mission um it is something we have been working on since we um decided to um, work full-time in God's kingdom. Um, we have a couple of financial partners back in the Netherlands as well who've been mm. very supportive um, through all those two and a half years, who have been supportive in the mission for Scotland. Um, and, and with the whole Corona, COVID crisis, we, um, so far it's been good. God has been providing enough, uh, but we foresee um, a little drop when it comes to the um, support, yeah. yeah, the financial support. Thank you for that. I was looking for the right words. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would ask you all to maybe pray for it uh, if you can consider to become a financial partner of the yeah. work that we do for Afterbeat UK and Netherlands. Um, if you want to become a, a personal partner for our mission, uh, please let us know. You can text us, you can yes. call us. We'll email. have a coffee with you. Uh, yeah, or... we're happy to have a coffee yes. online or uh, maybe in a cafe around here so we can talk about that more. Um, it wouldn't have to be a lot actually if you can just, you know, spare a couple of pounds a month. That would be awesome. Um, but just whatever you feel like God is asking you, and that's that 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 be your guide. Yeah. That just just ask God if um, if you can uh, help us out in this mission. If you really yes. feel that you want to do that, just let us know. If it's a one or five or ten or one hundred, whatever, we don't care. It's also about the spiritual uh, support you give with that. Absolutely. You know, um, it's if you give the money, it's not your money; it's God's money. So. And that's a two-way system. And that's a two-way system, Absolutely. you know. And it's and, and also we want to stay in touch with you, you know. Yes. So we want a personal relationship with our supporters, you know. It's it's really hard to keep up with everybody, but at least we try with our newsletters. And sometimes I, there are even supporters who are asking me to text instead of sending a newsletter. And that's we do fine. that, you know. Yeah. We do that um, because we want to keep up everybody with our missions and stuff like that. And that's why this Absolutely. coffee is so important for us. So if you really feel like okay i'm interested in your story again um please call us text us whatever um to have a coffee maybe online you know or maybe at the Nero's here or whatever uh, and th 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 that means that's the same for the people in the netherlands if if uh, azuli 
Uh, nou ja, ons een warm hart willen toedragen. Uh, we willen heel graag met jullie on, on, ja, online dan skypen of wat dan ook. Zodat ja. we dan ons verhaal kunnen vertellen. En ook onze ideeën over waarom we terug naar Vietnam gaan. En het missiecentrum, wat dat dan precies is. Uh, ja, stuur dan gewoon een tekstbericht naar ons. En, en dan gaan ja, we gewoon een mailtje. Een, mag ja, ook. mailtje, dan gaan we gewoon een afspraakje maken. Ja. Uh, dat kan via Afterbeat, dat kan via info at stichtingafterbeat.nl. You can reach us by sending an email to info at afterbeat.org.uk or alco.stool at afterbeat.org.uk. Uh, or our website or through our social media. Just Reach out to us if you want to have that coffee or Skype conversation with us to hear our story why we still need support from Scotland and for Scotland and for the Netherlands and for our missions and for God's kingdom. Yeah. We really want to, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, we want to just highlight that. Just please, um, yeah, help us. And you also, if you would just want to start. On our websites, uh, there are you can pay um, by uh, a standing order, but you can also pay uh, by uh, direct debit. It's all possible. Uh, we're working on gift aid as well, um, so stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Ik vind het goeie. Ja, mooie vraag, Grietje. Um, Waar wil je God vanavond voor danken? Uh, yeah, Grietje has been just asking um, what do you want to uh, thank God for tonight. Uh, which is an amazing question, I guess. And please do respond as well in the chat. Where, where do you yeah. want to thank God for tonight? Uh, we'd love to read that as well. It's always good to hear some success stories, especially in times like this. Yeah. Um, I want to I wanna oh, pray oh. At, at, and thank God for the Vine Church. Um, without the Vine Church, man, oh man, they, they the people in the Vine Church, man, it was just open arms. We call it in Dutch a warm bath, and, and that was what it was. Like Mel and Tim, uh, so many other people, Joyce Art, um, so, so everybody in the Vine, Andrew, you too, you always so friendly to us. And you, from the first moment of we were home, and um, that, that's kind of hurting me as well because we can't say a proper goodbye to our, to our home church. And, um, um, yeah, that, that 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 does really hurt me, and it's still it's a stupid building maybe, um, but I do think it's a place of connection, encouragement. If if the vine is some so good at something, is honoring people and 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 encourage people, and I want to thank you all for that. But I also want to thank God for um, yeah this amazing amazing church. I want to thank Heart and Sound Steve Steve uh, Steve Chalmers and his wife. For the amazing support they gave um and and maybe top of the bill melanie timpson thompson and tim thompson uh five years ago i met this guy he said we need this we need an after beat in in scotland we did a small thing and now we're together in this scottish charity um how mysterious are god ways so i, I want to thank uh, i want to thank them for their friendship for their tremendous help uh, support, encouragement, it's just amazing. Um, yeah, but also, for life. this is not just for now, but this yeah. is for life, definitely. How good is it to be on a mission together? And yeah. that mission won't stop here. Yeah. I thank God for Scotland, Gietje. I, I totally agree. I, yeah. I thank God for Scotland and the people here um uh yeah who, who brought our faith in another level and i i can i can take talk for ages about it but also Absolutely. people from the netherlands you know get you yourself uh yeah. you're always online when we when we do this stuff and you're telling us encouraging stuff you have a heart for youth Absolutely. uh we love that and um That's we nice. we know you you prayed for us and lots of people in Vendam prayed for us as well and when we said we would move back um the responses we had from the Netherlands, thank God, Honestly. thank God for that. That's so overwhelming. So overwhelming. It made um, me cry at one point. People were yeah. so, um, so happy to read that and so encouraging. Yeah. And so, oh, it just felt so good to see that everyone was behind that decision as well. And we need that. We need that support. Like I said before, sometimes it's tough. And we can we can honestly um if we can ask you guys to pray for protection for our family that yeah. would be awesome mm -hmm. because we can we can feel at the moment as soon as the word was out that we decided yeah. to move back to the netherlands 
it's another it's warfare. another confirmation for me as well yeah. because that's when honestly it's maybe a bit weird to say but all hell broke loose um at least that's how we felt it in our family you know we could feel that the enemy was raging um and i think that's because he knew that we were just following god's plan and he's been attacking us over the last couple of days like crazy uh, but we know our god is stronger um and we really need him to just go before us and we'll all Amen. be fine but we need prayer guys just yes, please, please pray for us Please pray for our kids. Please pray for um, for wisdom to make yes, right wisdom, choices. Yeah. Uh, but also practical things like we we are looking for a house back in the Netherlands yes, and all the Dutch people. That. You might know that it's it's crazy times to to get a house, yeah. to get a rental place, or to buy a place. Um, so that's gonna be a tough one. But um, um, we want to stand. Please pray for yeah, that yeah. because we know God will provide yeah, there will. as well. But we just want to know that we're looking for the house that God is going to give us. Yes. So we don't want to make decisions because we are panicking as people. But we want to make decisions because God is giving us the right thing. Yes. So please pray for patience for us as well because honestly we rather move back yesterday than today um but we need yeah. more patience we need you know to wait for the right timing here so please pray for his provision in financial in housing yeah. but also his protection on our family um, and please yeah. let us know as well um if you don't want to share it here in the chat just uh please Your direct message us, us yeah. um so we can pray for you if you need anything okay yes, yes we definitely will do that um and that's also partnership you know partnership is not only yeah. Um, giving money we had lots of people in our newsletter uh, I think 80% don't give to us and maybe I'm exaggerating but a lot of people don't give financially to us but Billy Graham the guy I just showed um, said once um, that told once that he had a sponsor and he came up to him and he said man I'm gonna give you three one million um, on do in dollars and you don't need to ask for sponsors anymore yeah. so he said okay let me pray about that and then later on he came back to this person he said you know what i don't want that three million dollars because now i have 30 people giving me less but those 30 people are all praying for me there's 30 prayers going up in heaven for me for my mission yeah. for the god for for the kingdom and i think that's it i think that's it you know um if if you can't give Fine, you know, just pray for us, but we want to pray for you as well. It goes absolutely. both ways, like Miriam said. You prayer, know? prayer is absolutely the most, mo the, the most thing needed in in our mission. Without prayer, we're doomed. Honestly, yeah. uh, we just we just need prayer to just keep on going to show us the right direction to go. Um, and you guys praying for us, you know, yeah. fi financial support. Honestly, it's needed too. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Uh, make that any uh, different um, but without prayer it's done anyway we just need prayer the most so please pray for us if you can if you don't want to be a financial supporter or you can't just pray for us that's that's needed the most yes and Andrew we just saw yeah uh, we're gonna do your that. encouragement would like yes. to have a coffee absolutely let's yeah. do that and it would be nice to see you again yeah. in person it's been a while uh so yeah we can we even can, go um, to the nero or whatever it's yeah. allowed it's allowed to meet with one household so if you're comfortable with that we want to do that as well but if you prefer virtually that's also fine we can do that we'll and, make the um, arrangements soon andrew should be fine yes and uh, like i said you know don't feel guilty if you don't can you can't give uh, just uh just pray for us, you know, like like Billy Graham said, like many prayers is much more important than financial supporters. Uh, th that's way more important than that. And that's what we experienced as well, you know, like when God guides, you know, he will provide. But, you know, if you have an extra prayer over that, we, we had so many things happening to us that we yeah. know it was prayers Absolutely. you know that when, when sponsors when when i was walking up to the garage once when i had oh, yeah. when, when i when we didn't have the money on the bank account so i needed to use my credit card and it's not even long ago i had to pay for four more new tires on my on my car and uh I, I was like, you know, we don't have the money, so I'm going to use my credit card. And then God was like, but you need to check your Dutch bank account. And I'm like, but there's no money in my Dutch bank account. 
And this is what prayer does. You know, there are people praying for us in Scotland or in the Netherlands who weren't financial supporters, but they got money in what way it doesn't matter. They got money and they had the feeling to give us a certain amount. And it was the exact amount I needed for my, um, for my tires, you know, um, when God guides, he provides. Not more, not less. Not just more, not enough. less. And just enough is all we need. That's with all the projects we had with Afterbeat and even with the message, not a dime extra. It covered everything. God is good. That's, that's who he is. And not just to us guys, but God is good. And um, you know, I just saw your post, Yanni. Um, I wish you had a little bit of your faith and trust in this strange world. I, I get it. Honestly, yeah. I get it. And honestly, from the outside, maybe from the, it might look yeah. that we have all the faith and all the strength we need, but honestly, we don't, we don't. Um, it's just, you know, um, and that's something that I'm really thankful for tonight. Uh, you know, sharing our story again, talking to you guys, just made me realize that overall, God is good, yes. you know, he has been providing us. He has opened up the doors when we were asking for it. Uh, he set us down when we needed a rest. You know, everything that we needed, he has been providing. And even though it wasn't my timing, his timing was always the right timing. So God is good all the time. And that's always the answer. I remember Aaron Douds yes. saying it to me once when we just moved over, he's the pastor of Divine Church. And we were struggling, honestly. We were just moving over. We had so many questions, so much things that we didn't know at that point. And I was, I was struggling. I had questions and I was doubting God. And I was doubting his time and I was doubting all the decisions that he was making. And then at one point, Aaron said, you know, there's one answer to all of these questions. And I was like, well, tell me. And he said, God is good. And it is the question. And that answer. is basically the answer we all need because everything you need is in those words if god is good that means he will provide if god is good that means he will come comfort you when you need it if god is good he will be with you when you're going out and you're um, anxious or whatever if god is good he is there and when he's there you know miracles are going to be done uh, lives are going to be changed uh, people are going to see christ through you and that's why we're here. We're here to make disciples. So we keep on going. Yes. And hopefully with your support, guys, we need you guys on this. We are a team together. We're God's army. And what a privilege it is that we can be God's army in this time of need. Because people are needy. People yes. are hungry for more of God. People need Jesus right now. So just go out there. Just show Jesus. Just trust God that he... he um, but there's this verse in Esther. I still have that... Thing on the wall that says yeah. perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created and I do believe that this is the moment for which you have been created you are here to make a change maybe not in uh, uh, a million people's lives like Billy Graham but you know if there's one neighbor that you can be a change to that you can show like oh you know there's more in this life than just the life on that there's a God that cares for you that's it you know so important just trust God that he, you are here for a reason Yes. He put you here. We need you all. So, Yanni, yeah. keep that in mind. That's right. And from the outside, it all looks so big and, you know, all these things, uh, social media, it looks all fancy, but we're just normal human beings and we don't have vision for big cities and big stuff and whatever, you know. When we moved over, I started to work for this big, big organization and I love them. I love them back, forward, and oh man, I love those guys. And you know, you have like vision, now it's gonna happen, you know, and, and we're gonna reach the world and I'm gonna be a part of that and boop, 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 boop. But God said, no, then firmly and vain down. That's enough. Yeah. You can say like, oh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> no, that's enough. That's, that's, that's the moment I've been made for. That's the moment Miriam is made for. Okay, well. Apparently, huh? When he guides, he provides, you know, come yeah. on. So. You know, um, yeah, that's that's how we try to live, and um, I hope we encouraged 
a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I, I really like the fact actually that we are here with Dutch people and Scottish people. You know, yeah. so cool. <laughs> um, and we're chatting all in English. We all understand each other. Uh, and like uh, Melanie said, if it ain't Dutch, it ain't much. You know, that's <laughs> that's just we know we we know so many languages, man. In our uh, area, we also uh, speak German, so you know if there's some Germans uh, out Je there. Ne parle pas yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no habla espanol. So um, yes, wow. so no, but it's so cool that that from two places, Veendam and Dunfermlin, somehow got connected those two towns. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's so cool. It's just so cool that people are chatting around and liking each other's. Uh, comments and encouragements and uh, really I really love that you know and um, I, I'm looking forward to that moment that we're gonna have church all together you know and uh, I don't know I don't need to step on a plane anymore but I can just tap Tim or anyone on the shoulder because we're all in this big one church in a new Jerusalem you know um, I'm looking forward to that and I'm getting yeah. excited with all these people in this chat and so yeah it's, it's so amazing and um yeah, I uh, I really like uh, I, I, yeah I really liked it today, and I hope we um, well we answered some questions you had. Um, um, there weren't a lot of questions. We tried to uh, uh, answer as best as possible. Um, but if you still have questions, please text us. If yes, you have prayers, do. please please do. Yeah, honestly, uh, we can pray for you. Um, we, we ask for your partnership for our mission. But like I said before, I think we're all call, called to our yes. own personal mission in God's yes. kingdom. Yes. So let us pray for your personal mission as well. If you're struggling, uh, yes. or if you need like you know guidance as well, you know, in God to open doors for you, we can pray. We can stand yeah. behind you. Let us know. Okay, involve yes. us. Uh, and I think it would be nice to pray now as well at least i feel like yeah. i wanted to pray yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and i think then we'll wrap it up after that so um you want to pray as well or do you mm. want me to pray oh quick go on <laughs> okay let's just pray yes, oh hi sis <laughs> oh. oh good well guys uh, i'm just gonna pray um Yes, Lord Jesus, Father God, we just want to thank you. Thank you so much because you are a good, good Father. Yes, Lord. Father God, you are good. And that statement just stands over all, Lord Jesus. We are in a crazy time right now. We are in a crazy world, God. And sometimes it's tough to be a Christian, honestly. Yes, Lord. But God, Especially. we know that you are good. Yes, and God, there's so much in those words. You are a providing, loving, caring Father. God, and whatever we need, we can find with you. And we are struggling in this world. The enemy is raging, Lord mm. Jesus, and the enemy is trying to steal our joy. But God, you can turn our mourning into dancing, Lord Jesus. God, and I'll just pray for all those people who are uh, with us right now uh, through Facebook or maybe looking this video afterwards and are touched by maybe something we say or something that you did through our words or maybe just, you know, uh, in their thoughts or Jesus, in their hearts when they're watching mm. this, God, I just pray that you will provide in whatever they yes, need Lord, right yes. now. God, um, I just saw that, the, um, we, I just heard the song this morning when we had church, Lord Jesus, stir a passion in our, in our hearts, hearts Lord, Lord, and let it overflow. And yes, God, I just want to pray that yes. for all these yes, people Lord. who are watching right now. Yes, God, Lord. stir a passion in our hearts, so stir a passion so that we can go and we can make disciples, Lord Jesus, yes, that Lord. we can just spread your love around, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just, just, yeah. Make us your instrument, Lord Jesus. Use us in your kingdom, Lord Jesus. God, yes, we don't Lord. have a lot of time left. And this world is on fire. And the people need you more than ever, Lord Jesus. And God, we are here for a reason. Just help us, Lord Jesus, to just spread whatever we need to spread. Even though if uh, our faith is lacking, Lord Jesus, or we are anxious about everything that's going on, God, you're bigger than that. God, you are bigger than that. And I'll just pray that your Holy Spirit will be upon all of us. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, just guide us, Lord Jesus. Just show us the next open door, Lord Jesus. Show us the right way to go. God, just bring people on our path that we can care for, Lord Jesus, like you care for us. God, you are good. You are yes, good, Lord. and I thank you for that. I thank you that through everything that we're going through, your timing always has been right. God, even in the waiting, your timing is perfect. Yes, and I'll Lord. thank you for that. Yes, Bless Lord. all these lovely people. Bless all our financial partners. Bless all our 
partners that are with Church us partners, and encouraging yes. us, Lord Jesus, Jesus just Lord in Jesus. our mission, Lord Jesus, just whatever we are doing, Lord Jesus, we need to do mm -hmm. with fellow Christians. And I thank you for every single one of them. Yes, God, Lord. and I just pray for a huge blessing upon all of the families and those, those little children, Lord Jesus, God, and just stir the faith, stir the passion, Lord Jesus. God, and I'll pray for a revival in the midst of this crazy world right now. I'll pray for revival. I'll pray for your Holy Spirit to yes. just come down, Lord Jesus. God, and be the change that we all need so bad. God, use us. Use us in your way um, and go with us in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord, I want to thank you. And I thank you for Divine Church. Yes. I want to thank you for Tim and Melanie, for Jim and Lori, Lord. I want to thank you for Stephen and Hannah, Lord. I want to thank you for the... Sege Cafe Church in Veendam. I want to thank you for the Baptist Church in Veendam who took us as, um, yeah, as a sending church, Lord, without, uh, yeah, without asking, Lord. I want to thank you for that, Lord. But also that we're sent by another church in Veendam, Sege Cafe, Lord. I, mm. It's so amazing that two churches actually sending us, Lord. Yes. Uh, what a blessing is that, that they adopted us from this church that stopped in the moment um, and died in the moment when we left, Lord. And uh, I pray over this mission. Uh, what is your mission and not mine not Miriam's and the name after me is just a stupid name but I pray that your mission this mission that it's going to be blessed in the name of Jesus yes, Christ Lord Jesus and that name. please made lots of disciples uh, mm. through this mission yes, Lord Jesus. and uh, yes Lord I really pray that you're gonna help uh, use us for that Lord um, but I also pray that you're gonna use all these people in this chat Lord but mm -hmm. because I think lots of people underestimate how much qualities they have, Lord. Mm -hmm. And also, I think a lot of people, um, yeah, yeah, that's what I do think, that they're still not figured out what moment they are made for. Mm -hmm. And I think that moment is coming soon. And Lord, mm -hmm. I see lots of people are joining uh, online churches and people are asking, when is the church opening up again? So people are uh, touched by your word through the, uh, yeah, through the online church social media churches lord and i thank you also for that i thank mm -hmm. you for that lord but i really pray that schools and our mission can open up again uh with our arches that we can go back into schools and that we can have great events where we can share your gospel lord i really pray that's going to happen again and if it's not lord if it's your will if it's not your will to go back like that lord please show us a new way of doing mission mm -hmm. lord show it through melanie and tim through show it through us lord or maybe to other people lord please help us with that yes. and uh bless all these people in the chat in the name of jesus, jesus christ name. lord and i know you're making a new plan right now you're changing you're shifting the world right now lord yes. and we we need to focus on you, Lord. Mm. We don't need to focus on all these conspiracies and all these things, Lord. And whatever I believe or others believe, mm. everybody can believe whatever they want to believe. But you're talking in the Bible about fruitless discussions. And that that's ungodly. And help us not to end up in these mm. discussions, Lord. Because it's so tempting, Lord. But help us to talk about life. Speak life. Speak life over all the people in our area online and maybe in this coffee shop when it's allowed to meet lord mm. help us to speak live in sp instead of these fruitless discussions lord please help us with that i even struggle with it a lot but like you said to habakkuk habakkuk you can't cope with what i'm doing right now with the world so i'm not gonna tell what i'm gonna about to do and that's what what's happening right now lord we can't cope with what you're doing right now, Lord. But we know you're coming back soon. And I thank you for that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay, for... We willen naar afsluiten. En uh, voor de mensen die het niet gezien hebben, ik sluit gewoon af met het filmpje. En... Um, en een goodbye van ons. So, en hopelijk uh, voor de Nederlanders tot snel. Yeah. Hoe gaaf is Oh, dat? Joshua Kelly. Oh, man. So cool. I want to do a mission in Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait, man. So cool to see you. Okay, uh, sorry about that. I needed to say that because that missionary is amazing. Look his ministry up. He's amazing. He's doing great missions all over the world. What's and he doing he, again? Help me. He, he has lots of vlogs. He does vlogs. He's just an amazing guy. <laughs> So, so cool. So, Marjolein is uh, our uh, sister and um, also for you. I think this, especially for you, I think this is for you. Uh, I don't think you saw, saw it from the start. 
but I think it's for a lot of people, you know, I am so tempted to end up in all these conspiracies and there is some crazy stuff going on. You know, let's let's be real. It's odd what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to tell anything about my opinion here because I don't want fruitless discussions. <laughs> but look at this movie from Billy Graham. It's like 50 years ago he said this, but it's so present day. And uh, that's how we end this. Uh, Want to end cool. this? Guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for just being part of our mission. Um, to be honest, when I had to start this tonight, I didn't feel like it at all. I wasn't happy. But now, guys, thanks so much because I feel so good. I feel, I feel so alive. I feel so happy to just. Uh, know you're all there and watching and supporting us and it's so cool to share about what God has been doing in our lives It's, it's a good reminder um, So maybe that's something that you can do if you're not feeling well Just go over the things that God has been doing in your life recently and it will bless you definitely Amen. And speak so, life over others Absolutely okay. Keep on going God bless you guys and hope to see you all soon Okay, bye bye Thank you, bye Habakkuk said, Lord, please tell me what you're doing. And God said, no, I'm not going to tell you, Habakkuk. Because if I told you what I was doing, you wouldn't believe it. If God today told us what he's doing in the world, we wouldn't believe it. Don't you think God's given up and God's abdicated and God's left the throne? He hasn't. He's still on the throne. And those of us that know him put our trust in him and him alone. I don't put my trust in Washington. I don't put my trust in the United Nations. I don't put my trust in myself. I don't put trust in my money. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When all the rest of it fails and crumbles and shatters, he'll be there. Join us live with interviews, devotionals, and lessons from all over the world. Welcome to After Beat TV.